What I wanted to bring up is, let's go back, because I know it's been a while for you guys, and let's go back to our original um, problem that we came up with. When we had a vector, and this vector had, if you guys remember, we did a vector AB. It was in your warm-up, if you look at your warm-up. And this vector had a component form of 4, 3. And we called that vector AB. A was the initial point. B was the uh, terminal point. And then what we did is we found vector form, which was 4, 3. All right? So let's go back into kind of writing some things. So vector V, 1, 2, 3. So vector V in component form is 4, 3. Again, component form, guys, starts always at 0, 0, and says, you know, first component is 4 horizontal, and then 3 units up. I'm not using parentheses because we're not representing the point. We're representing the vector from 0, 0 to the point 4, 3, right? That is your direction and your magnitude. All right, the magnitude of the vector was basically the length of the vector. And if you guys remember, we did kind of like the magnitude formula, which is kind of like the Pythagorean theorem, right, as well as like the distance formula which end up giving us a magnitude of 5. Okay, And then we also found the angle of the vector. And if you guys remember, the formula for the angle of the vector is tangent of theta equals b over a, where b is your second term and a is your first term. And we found that to be 36.87 degrees, I believe, if I remember correctly. Okay, and that was like vector. That was like, hey, all right, here's a, here's a vector, component form, magnitude. Thing. And then we started about talking about another vector that was very similar to that one, but it was a little bit different. And it started with the U. Do you guys remember? It was really, really cute. You guys know, like, you look at a little puppy. It was, like, really, really cute. It was this little thing called with the unit vector. You guys remember the unit vector? It was really, really cute. No? You remember the unit? Okay. So if you guys remember from the unit vector, the unit vector is had the same direction, or I'm sorry, had the same direction, like they both start 0, 0 going out, had the same angle. But does anybody remember what the magnitude of the unit vector was? One, one right? The magnitude is one. And does anybody remember how we go from the vector towards the unit vector? Does anybody remember that? The formula is written there right up there on the board. Right there, unit vector equals. It's, yeah, it's the vector divided by its magnitude. So basically, you're taking both components of the vector and dividing it by its magnitude. So our unit vector was 4 fifths comma 3 fifths. And that was our unit vector. Okay? So today's kind of entry level is actually pretty nice because I know it's, it's been a while for you guys, but that's kind of like a good review of what we learned in last class period. So if you weren't here, we kind of learned that. And then our warm up was common, and then combinations. That's basically everything we learned in last class period. So good. Now, let's kind of think about, um, now we're going to learn a couple more forms for vectors. So the first form we already learned, which is basically component form. So you have, uh, I'll just call this A, I'll just call this component 1, component 2. Okay. So you have a vector. You could call them AB, or you can call them V1, V2. Either way, you write it as component form. It starts at 0, 0, and goes to those components. Okay. All right. Now, let's take a look at the other forms. Because there's something that's interesting here, guys, is these two vectors, the angle of the two vectors is exactly the same, but, they, uh, but their magnitude is the one that's kind of different, right? That's changing, correct? So we can actually represent these. Um, they're very, very similar to each other. But to kind of get an idea of this, Let's go ahead and go, let's go and put this unit vector on the unit. Anybody finish my sentence? Circle. Circle, right, because that's something we're familiar with, right? Now, we're not really familiar with this coordinate point on the unit circle, right? That's not something we've really dealt with because, why? Because the unit circle, the angles we deal with is 30, 60, 90, 45 degrees. This angle is 36.87, right? Not, not the most useful angle to be using. However, it does give you a point on the unit circle. Um, let's see. Oh, well, forget about that. Let's not go back to that for a second. Let's just pick a point that we know. Let's just pick a, a point that a vector that we know it's on the unit circle. Let's do 30 degrees. If we are going to make a vector for this 
if we're going to compone this, or have this, let's call this a, our new unit vector, we know the coordinate point here is square root of 3 over 2, comma 1 half. So if I wanted to write this as a vector, I would say square root of 3 over 2, comma 1 half. Right? Yeah? Now, how else can we represent this vector? How else can we represent that in terms of its angle? Well, let me ask, let me know if this is if this works. Can we say the cosine of 30 degrees, comma, the sine of 30 degrees? Because what's the cosine of 30 degrees? Square root of 3 over 2. What's the sine of 30 degrees? What half? So couldn't we also rewrite it like this? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Now, the thing is, guys, what if we wanted a vector? What instead if we didn't want vector, what if we wanted the vector to be multiplied by 2? Then what would we need to do to multiply by this component? Just multiply by 2. So, and that would give you a new magnitude, right? So if you wanted, to, if you wanted your unit vector to be, have a magnitude of 2, you just multiply you know, 2 times the magnitude, so it has a magnitude of 2. But then you just multiply the 2 times your component form. So that takes us to our number, our number 2 form, which is just called our magnitude direction. So all it is is that basically by no, our knowledge of the unit circle says, if we know the angle, then we can create a vector on the unit circle. But the thing is, our vectors on the unit circle all have a magnitude of 1. And if we want a new magnitude, or whatever our, like for instance, if we want our magnitude to be 5, then we just multiply our vector by a magnitude of 5. So let me actually show you what this one would be. So our, our example here is 4, 3. So our example here is what is the, vec what is the magnitude of V? 5. And then what is our angle? 36.87. So it's a cosine of 36.87 degrees, comma, sine of 36.87 degrees. Yes, no, maybe so. Yeah. You OK? Who's got it? Perfect. Okay. No, not OK? Now, let me just go and look at this one more time. Just let's look at, let's look at this as far as, um, I don't know, I think that's, is everybody OK with that? If everybody's OK with that, I'm just going to leave it like that. That understanding. Yes? No? You can, no question? Good? It depends, I mean, it just depends on, no, but if you're going to use your angle, then yeah, it has to be magnitude times your vector. And then also, just remember, guys, that we can distribute this, right? That's cosine of 36.87 degrees comma 5 sine of 36.87 degrees, right? That's the scalar multiple, right? You can distribute that scalar through, OK? Now, there's another form. So we know the unit vector. The unit vector has the same direction and angle as our other vector. It just has a magnitude of 1, right? So if we wanted, is the key about this, guys, is if you know what the unit vector is, all you got to do to find the vector with a different magnitude is just multiply that unit vector times whatever magnitude you want, right? Yes? If I said, oh, what's the vector, what's the vector in the same direction as v but has a magnitude of 100, what would we multiply it by? You just take the unit vector and multiply it by 100, right? Yes? Once, so once you find the unit vector, if you want a different magnitude, just multiply the unit vector by the magnitude. And that's just going to increase it, right? Here would be 2u, right? 3u, right? D whatever your magnitude you want. Um, now, another way to look at this is kind of like going back to our triangle days. If we were to think about this as a triangle, you guys, when we count, right? When we went to 4, 3, what did we do? We counted. One, two, three, four. We counted four units horizontally and one, two, three units vertically. Yes? We don't really say that out loud, but that's really what we did. Four units to the right, three units up. So didn't we technically just do four unit vectors to the right and three unit vectors up? Yes? Does that make sense? 
Now, we don't want to call these unit vectors u because u is the unit vector that has the same direction and angle as our regular vector. But we can call these unit vectors different names. And they, unfortunately, all the names have kind of been taken care of. So their names are i. That's not the imaginary unit i. And these ones are called j. So another way to write the vector 4, 3, or at least to represent that, is vector v equals v1i plus v2j. Or in our example, 4i plus 3j. And that is what we call as a linear combination. You're basically just taking the unit vector horizontal. You're basically just you know, inserting i's and j's. But what that's saying is 4 horizontal unit vectors plus 3 vertical vectors. And obviously, guys, if it's negative, you're going to have a neg you know, negative components and so on and so forth. But that is a way that you guys would see that. OK? Questions? Comments? Yes? So what are you supposed to do? Nothing. I'm just saying that's another form that we could write in. Yes, Ashlyn? Oh, I thought you had a question. Yeah, so it's just another form you'll see when we do problems. Like on your homework, some of the vectors are represented like that instead of component form.